Is season three really gonna open with this boring ass show nobody remembers? But upon rewatching it, I was suddenly relieved as it all came back to me, because this one is freaking sweet. I guess I'm just so used to them giving these self-explanatory titles like Pickles or Reef Blower. Wow, I wonder what those are about. After getting sick of his place in life, Plankton decides to switch places with Mr. Krabs to get a look at the sweet life of Zack and Cody. I like that he comes to the realization that Mr. Krabs doesn't have as good of a life as he thinks he does, having to take care of all these idiots while dealing with his daughter, Spongebob, Squidward, and trying to prevent Plankton from stealing his formula, who is now Mr. Krabs, obviously. The worst part of it is... Naked. Once again, as a premiere, it's just kind of showing you this season will be more of the same. But for what it is, this episode surely stands out because of its uniqueness, and it's got a bunch of funny parts. I notice the humor here is much faster paced, but I assume it's due to them trying to cover as much ground as they can with this one-off concept. The algae is always greener is very good. Not much else to say. Solid start to the season. <laughs> I think this may have been the only time where I've confused a season 1-3 to three episode with one from the later parts of the show, because I assumed this was the Living Like Larry episode. Instead, Spongebob is tasked with helping out Larry the Lobster on lifeguard duty at the beach, not wanting to let him know that he still can't swim. So, how's that time coming? Other than the shitty CG boardwalk when Larry is rushing to save the guy, and oftentimes forgetting this one even exists, I was surprised at just how funny it is. Spongebob's desperate attempts at getting everyone out of the water is great, although my favorite part would have to be this background guy I just noticed where this one fish shits in the water and does a little troll face. There's a lot of great paintings here too, like Spongebob's cool outfit and Patrick's ass that Sponge Guard is going under the previous one, but it's still very good. Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward all get launched deep into the kelp forest. There's no way of getting out. I'm shocked at how we've had like 20 of these sorts of episodes so far, and they're still managing to find new ways to keep it fresh and put them in new scenarios. The highlight is of course the magic conch, which the two idiots religiously follow. There isn't really much to say here, it's just another hilarious episode star in these three. Definitely one of the best so far, I'd put it right at the top. My Pretty Seahorse is one of the lesser talked about episodes of the early years, and honestly I can see why. It's not bad, but nowhere near the best we've seen. Spongebob finds a seahorse and calls her Mystery, then predictably Mr. Krabs tells him to get rid of it, he doesn't want to, he gets caught, and it has to leave. There were like two, maybe three guys here I find funny and the rest was just alright. Sorry if you like this one, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. Bottom of the list. Thankfully though, the bully more than makes up for the previous, because it is hilarious. It's so funny to see Spongebob face a threat that he has no means of stopping no matter what he does, especially since it's as simple as a folly at his boating school who wants to kick his butt. I just love how extreme they go with this concept, Flats is such a funny character to me, that literally no matter what Spongebob does, he is still hell bent on kicking his butt. And the payoff that it didn't even matter because he's a sponge and therefore it wouldn't hurt him is amazing. Best of the season so far, second to none. Also, as a kid, I felt unreasonably bad for this old man that all the residents come and kick the shit out of. Did he make it out okay? I, I, I can't go on without knowing! So Spongebob finds out that Squidward has never had a Krabby Patty, and so wants to share with him their glory. Next, I suppose you'll want me to go square dancing with Patrick! Sorry, Patrick. Hmm. <laughs> um, actually, in see- Um, actually, in Season 2 Episode 1's Your Shoes Untied, we clearly see Squidward eat a Krabby Patty. Boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunt. See Squidward eat a Krabby Patty. Boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. This is another episode that they used to air a fuck ton, but unlike Big Pink Loser, where I felt like it made me not care for it as much, the same cannot be said for just one bite. I could watch it again and again and again and still get a kick out of how funny it is. Oh, honey.
Did you know there was a deleted scene from this episode that featured Squidward sneaking into the Krusty Krab that gets doused in lighter fluid and burns alive? Apparently some kid around that time saw a similar thing on Beavis and Butthead, and ended up burning his house down with his baby sister still in there, killing her. <laughs> Wee, look at silly little Spongebob face, <laughs> look, at, look at his face, Whoa. Just one bite rules, it's going at the top of season 3 for now. I still love the bully, but this one just slightly edges on top. Mr. Krabs thinks that a phony health inspector is trying to get free food out of him, and so he and Spongebob purposely feed him this nasty patty that covered in shit, like literal shit that put that thing in the toilet. But after thinking it killed him, the two now have to go and hide the body. This may seem like a darker theme for a Spongebob episode, but it works in its favor completely. It's so funny having to watch Mr. Krabs and Spongebob fucking square pants attempt to cover up an assumed murder from the police. The visuals here are also stellar, the grim foggy hilltop at night and the crusty crab looking all desolate and drab by the end. The animation and art sells the shift in tone and ups the tension wonderfully. Now it's not the most humorous episode out there, I think the bully and just one bite are miles better honestly, but Nasty Patty is still very good, I'd put it right under Club Spongebob. It's so weird that upon rewatching this episode, I realized that it's literally just the exact same plot as the paper again. Except instead of a piece of paper, it's a cardboard box, and Patrick is also there. Saying that, I think Idiot Box actually managed to be more enjoyable compared to the paper, despite the reuse story, just because it's more funny. Squidward gets a brand new TV, and is infuriated that Spongebob appears to be getting more enjoyment out of the box he came in. I like the angle that Squidward actually thinks he's being antagonistic here, with the two trying to pull one on Squidward by convincing I mean, the box is actually magical in some way. Where in reality, it's all because of his imagination. I like the ending too. It's instead the exact opposite of the paper, where Squidward actually does manage to unlock something in his brain and start to use his imagination, experiencing another brief moment of happiness. He gets sent to the dump in reality, but I'm gonna use my imagination and pretend that part never happened. Good for you, Squidward. Idiot Box is going under Club Spongebob. Oh shit, this is the Wumpo episode! I always thought that came from season 4 or 5 because of the more outlandish plot, of Spongebob accidentally winding up a mermaid man's utility belt, and start shrinking all of Bikini Bottom, but I guess not. Huh. Learn something new every day, I guess. It's certainly not one of the best. Other than the classical Wumbo bit, which would go down in history as one of the funniest moments in animated history, the only parts I got any kind of laugh from were his little cockroach restaurant, and then comes a giant fist! And the rest is just like, alright, you know, it's solid. If anything, I wish there was more to it. Maybe less in the time it takes him to get the belt, and use that time to have a short montage or something, showing us more utilities that the utility belt can do. We only ever see it shrink. But there's still enough here to make it worth the watch. I'm gonna be putting Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 4 underneath the algae being greener and such. Seems like the writers also recognized how much Mrs. Puff was sent to prison, with this episode using that as the starting ground for their story. Where to be able to avoid Spongebob for the rest of her life, she actually wants to be in prison, with Spongebob and Patrick trying to break her out against her will. My favorite part of this one doesn't even have to do with the jail aspect though. Spongebob attempting to rob the bank with Patrick was a definite highlight, along with the montage of what it's like in the outside world, but the rest I'm not that into. If anything, I feel bad for Mrs. Puff, torturing her to the point of needing to be put in a straitjacket, and she didn't even really do anything wrong here, and the ending is a funny idea, but honestly, even as a kid it always bothered me if I just stop. Still though, it's an alright one, I certainly don't regret watching it at all. It's going under Spongebob on duty. Non Christmas themed winter episode, with the gimmick being that an iceberg is spread over top of Bikini Bottom, covering the town in snow. I enjoy that they use this for a rather simple concept. SpongeBob and Patrick are having a snowball fight to the annoyance of Squidward. And yeah, you can guess where this is going, we've seen this concept countless times at this rate. It's for sure not one of their strongest compared to something like Idiot Box, which I still think does this dynamic the best, but the fresh coat of paint helps it stand out, and the aspect of it being a war also helps differentiate it. The sign design here really does a good job of giving these snowballs 
all the matter punch. The sound effects they use are so harsh. And the little Ford argument between Squidward, Patrick, and SpongeBob is hilarious. Snowball Effect is going above doing time. Season 3 has been great so far, but I definitely say Season 2 has had the better batch. But to be fair, we have another 30 or so to go, so let's see if they manage to get better as it goes on. After selling Spongebob a drinking hat that turns out to be priceless, Mr. Krabs has got to find a way to get it back. This episode is amazing, it's got so many classic moments, such as the Foxy Grandpa hat, floating shopping list, and I always find the voice they gave to Schmitty Werbin, Werbin Jaggerman Jensen. And I always, and I always find the voice they gave to Schmitty Wer- And I always find the voice they gave to Schmitty Werbin Jaggerman Jensen, fuck you, I got it. It's so, to be so fucking funny. I love how extreme the plot here gets, leading Mr. Krabs to graveyard robbing and ending on an all-out war between him and an army of fish skeletons. We even get that one grave digging screenshot that everybody loves to post anytime Nick does anything new with Spongebob these days. Aside from that, one man's trash is going near the top of the ranking, right above the algae's always greener. That hat makes you look like a girl. Am I a pretty girl? Another Krusty Krab related episode. This time, Krabs wants to create a commercial which ends up going to SpongeBob's head, thinking he's a big time actor now. Hey, I saw you on TV last night. New brand flakes. Going in, I was ready to see this one being more middle of the road compared to others. I didn't really remember much about it, other than the iconic striped sweater song, which was apparently entirely improv by Tom Kenny. But upon my rewatch, I was surprised at how funny it is. SpongeBob's transition to wanting to leave the Krusty Krab might be a little out of character, but I don't mind because of how silly his egotism is. A very good one here, right under Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 4. L look at this little fish's flipper, it, it cuts off a tad and then slides back into his body. Moving on. <laughs> After a fight between him and Mr. Krabs causes Squidward to quit and wind up homeless, Spongebob offers to let him stay at his house until he gets back on his feet, eventually becoming a freeloader, taking advantage of Spongebob's kindness. I've never seen an episode so quickly make me sympathize for a character and then begin to hate him. No one's gonna serve you happiness on a silver platter. Free sample? Cookies! Can I have one? That's not a bad thing, though. It's hilarious seeing how fed up Spongebob eventually gets with Squidward's laziness. After being so kind to him throughout the first half, there's so many great gags such as him trying to get to sleep at night in his puppet show. Can you spare a dime is going near the top of the ranking, surely for how much it stands out between the other Spongebob and Squidward episodes, with him being actually pissed at him. Tom Kenny and Roger Bumpus give great performances here too. Perfect, here we go, a string of amazing episodes in a row. No Weenies Allowed is definitely one of my favourites out of the whole show, which is shocking because the whole thing primarily takes place in one location, but I find that these simple stories always wind up being the best, as they allow the writers to take full advantage of whatever setting the characters are in. Here Spongebob wants to get into the salty spittoon, but sadly isn't allowed in because he's not tough enough, and therefore he needs to prove himself. I'll have you know I stubbed my toe last week while watering my spice garden, and I only cried for 20 minutes. What more can I say? It's a fantastic one that never feels like it's growing steel, in the way it starts to naturally introduce funnier and funnier elements, like Weenie Hut Jr.'s Patrick coming in, and the entirety of the ending was a great payoff for the whole thing. Favorite of the season so far. Damn, the balls on these riders, bringing Squilliam back again for another rivalry episode. How could that possibly top fans? Well, the truth is, they don't. Squilliam returns is nowhere near on that level, but on its own, it's still a very good one. I like how willing everyone is to helping out Squidward here. It's nice to have an episode every once in a while that doesn't completely be done on him. The star here is Spongebob, though, who goes crazy after being ordered to forget everything except fine dining and breathing. Squilliam Returns is good. Not the best, but fine is hard to follow up, admittedly. It's going under as seen on TV. <laughs> Pew, 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 pew,
After getting freaked out from a scary movie, SpongeBob starts to worry that Mr. Krabs is a robot, eventually getting Squidward in on the theory. I never enjoyed this one. It's got a few good gags and Electric Zoo is a pop, but it almost just seemed like a worse version of Imitation Krabs, which already wasn't a favorite. I guess I just never find the joke that Mr. Krabs just so happens to start doing all this robot-related stuff that dead that SpongeBob is scared of robots all that funny. The parts I enjoyed the most were entirely separate from the robot shit. Crap boards at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Thankfully, to make up for the lackluster previous episode, we have one here that I quite like. Fun Club and Patrick take care of a lost baby plan, adopting a mother and father role. Seeing how bad of a father Patrick would be is hilarious, with him spending less and less time at home to pretend to go to work for the dad. That's it, it's just funny, that's all. Wet Painters is one of the absolute best episodes of the entire show. The sheer tension it built for me as a kid was insane, with Spongebob and Patrick being asked to paint the walls of Mr. Krabs' house, but if they get paint on anything, he'll pretty much kill them. Seeing the desperation of the two realizing they got a slight drop of paint on his first dollar and trying to get it off is so funny.